The primary display system has two major functions. It provides information to the flight crew about the state of the airplane and its systems. And it allows the flight crew to manage this information and interface with the rest of the avionics systems. Airplane information is displayed on six flat panel display units. There are four graphics generators which generate all the graphic symbols that appear on the display units. Each graphics generator can be thought of as a display channel. Normal system operation is with three channels, each driving two display units. The remaining channel acts as a backup. Any one channel can provide information to the display units, although in a degraded mode. The display units themselves are designated left and right outboard, left and right inboard, and upper and lower center. The lower center display unit, as well as the inboard display units, are called multifunction displays, or MFDs. MFDs can be used to show a variety of information in different display formats. At airplane power-up, the primary flight displays, or PFDs, are on the outboard display units. Some of the PFD indications are attitude, airspeed, and altitude. The navigation displays, or NDs, are on the inboard display units. The ND can show both full compass rows and expanded rows HSI indications, as well as a moving map display. The engine indication and crew alerting system, or ICAS display, is on the upper center display unit. The lower center display unit initializes to the secondary engine display and is the recommended display unit to use when displaying other MFD information. Before we discuss the displays, let's first look at some of the display unit controls. Inboard display unit selectors are located here on the left and right forward panels. These selectors allow the pilots to manually control the inboard display units. Each selector has identical positions. Let's use both selectors to help review their operation. Rotate the left selector to the PFD position. The PFD position selects the primary flight display to the inboard display unit. Notice the PFD is no longer displayed on the outboard display unit. Now rotate the right selector to the ICAS position. Touch the highlighted area. Observe that the upper center display unit is blank and ICAS is now displayed on the right inboard display unit. When either of these displays is switched from its normal display unit, the normal display unit blanks. Now rotate both selectors to NAV and watch the displays. The NAV position selects the navigation display to the inboard display unit. Notice the captain's PFD and the ICAST display return to their normal locations. When the switched displays are deselected from the inboard display units, the outboard and upper center display units reinitialize. The PFD, ICAS, and NAV positions allow you to lock that respective display onto the inboard display unit. The selector must be rotated to another position to manually change the display. Now rotate both selectors to the MFD position. NAV is one of two normal selector positions. MFD is the other normal position and also the pre-flight setting. Maximum display flexibility is achieved by operating the inboard display units as multifunction displays. When MFD is selected from PFD or ICAS, the ND automatically reinitializes on the inboard display unit. In MFD, other displays can be selected to the inboard display units by using the display select panel. The display select panel is located here on the glare shield. 
The display select panel allows the flight crew to select different displays on the lower center as well as the left and right inboard display units. Let's look at the display select panel controls. These display switches are used to activate a display unit for subsequent display selections. Only one display unit can be selected at a time. The enunciator light above the switch indicates that the left inboard display unit is now active. If a display unit is inhibited from accepting inputs, the light will not illuminate. To illustrate this, rotate the right inboard display selector to nav. Touch the highlighted area. The enunciator light did not illuminate because the right inboard display unit is currently locked to the navigation display. As a result, other displays cannot be selected. The left inboard display unit remains active instead. Selection of an inboard display unit on the display select panel is inhibited whenever the associated selector is in PFD or NAV. In ICAS, limited display select panel operations are possible. Those operations and other display unit inhibit conditions will be discussed later in the lesson. Before we go on, return the selector to MFD and push the lower center display switch. The MFD select switches are used to select MFD displays to the active display unit. System synoptics represent the majority of the MFD displays. Specific features of each display are described in the respective system lessons. A synoptic is an abbreviated schematic that displays status information about the system. Synoptics are not required for any crew procedures and should be used only as references. To discuss some common synoptic features, push the fuel synoptic switch. Green lines represent the movement or flow of fluid, electricity, or air. White lines connect system components when flow is not present. Most system suppliers, such as pumps and generators, are represented by rectangles. These pumps are on and supplying pressure. This pump is on, but not supplying pressure to the system. Amber symbols indicate a failed condition. Valve symbols indicate both valve position and status. Selecting a new display automatically replaces the previous selection. Push the electrical synoptic switch. Now push the electrical synoptic switch a second time to remove the electrical synoptic. Notice the lower center display unit. When the lower center display unit is active, Removing an MFD display blanks the display unit. However, on an inboard display unit, the ND displays again, since it is the initialization display on those display units. The navigation display switch is similar to other MFD switches and provides another way to display the ND on the inboard or lower center display units. The ND, however, is not considered an MFD display. It cannot be removed from the inboard display units, just temporarily replaced. The remaining display select panel control is the ICAS message cancel recall switch. Its use is covered in a later lesson. Before we continue, here's a chance for you to practice with the display select panel. For this exercise only, the communications display is inhibited because it can appear on only one display unit at any one time. You can select any other combination of switches you desire. Touch the green arrow when ready to continue. Touch the highlighted area. Touch the highlighted area.
The electronic flight instrument system or EFIS control panels are located here on the glare shield. The EFIS control panels control the PFD and ND displays. Detailed discussions of their operation come later in the PFD and ND lessons. For now, let's look at how the display system determines which panel has control over the three possible ND locations. Normally, when an ND is displayed on each inboard display unit, the associated panel controls that display. If only one inboard display unit and the lower center display unit contain NDs, the pilot without an ND on his inboard display unit controls the lower center display unit. If neither inboard display unit contains an ND, but the lower center does, then the left EFIS control panel controls the display. If both inboard display units and the lower center display unit all contain NDs, then the left EFIS control panel also controls the lower center display unit. The left inboard and lower center displays will be identical. MFD formats which require crew interaction, such as the communications display, are controlled with the cursor control devices, or CCDs. Each pilot has a cursor control device located here on the control stand. The cursor control is used to control a cursor on an MFD display that requires a cursor. The MFD that displays the cursor is determined automatically when display select panel selections are made or manually when the cursor location switches are used to activate a cursor on the selected MFD. The cursor location lights on each cursor control device indicate which MFD is displaying its cursor. Each CCD controls a unique cursor symbol. The cursor shown here is controlled by the left CCD. Push the lower center cursor location switch on the right CCD to display the right cursor symbol. The cursor is moved by sliding a finger across the touchpad. The touchpad is a capacitive glass surface which translates finger motion into cursor movement on the display. Moving the cursor over an active display item selects it. As the cursor moves into an active area, the item is highlighted by a white border. Pushing the cursor select switch activates the selection. Push the right cursor select switch. Touching a corner area immediately moves the cursor to that part of the display. The areas must be touched. Simply sliding a finger to a corner does not have the same effect. Try touching the corners of the right touchpad. Touch the green arrow to continue. Touch the highlighted areas. Touch the highlighted areas. Touch the highlighted areas. The cursor control devices are used for making selections on the checklist and communication displays. Let's look at which cursor appears when these two displays are selected. Display the checklist on the left inboard display unit. Touch the highlighted area. When checklist or communications is selected onto the left or right display unit, the associated cursor for that side appears. Now select the communications display to the right inboard display unit. Touch the highlighted area. If different displays are on the display units, both cursors can be used independently. Now select checklist to the right inboard display unit. Notice the cursor on the left inboard display unit is removed. When the same display is selected in two places, only one cursor can be active. In this case, the last pilot to make the selection will have control. Now select the communications display to the lower center display unit.
When selecting a display to the lower center display unit, either cursor could appear. If you wish to control the lower center display unit and the displayed cursor is not yours, pushing the lower center switch on your CCD displays your cursor. Display the first officer's cursor on the lower center display unit. Notice the first officer's cursor is removed from the right inboard display unit. Each cursor can only appear on one display unit at a time. And both cursors cannot appear on a single display unit at the same time. The last pilot selecting his cursor to a display unit will have control. Next, let's look at the display brightness controls. Manual brightness controls for the pilot's display units are located here on the sidewall panels. Panel. Each pilot has individual controls to adjust the brightness of the outboard and inboard display units. FD displaying the navigation display. The last controls we'll look at are the display control switches. Display control switches for each pilot's inboard and outboard display units are located on the instrument source select panels. A single switch for the center display units is located on the center display control panel. All of the switches shown here are in the normal pre-flight position. Operation of the navigation source and air data attitude switches are covered later in the ND and PFD lessons. All three display control switches operate the same. Push the left display control switch. When the switch is pushed to the alternate position, an alternate display channel is selected for the associated display unit pair. The switches are available for cases where a display failure may go undetected and automatic system reconfiguration does not occur. But what happens if a failure is detected? Let's look at some non-normal conditions. Automatic reconfiguration after a display unit failure is similar to what can be done manually using the inboard display selectors. If an outboard display unit fails, the PFD automatically switches to the inboard display unit regardless of the inboard display selector setting. If the upper center display unit fails, the ICAST display is switched to the lower center display unit and replaces whatever display is present. When one center display unit fails and the other displays ICAST, the remaining display unit then operates in a limited mode. Similarly, whenever an inboard display unit displays ICAS, it too operates in limited mode. For an example of limited mode operations, select the secondary engine display to the lower center display unit. The display unit now shows the compact engine display. This display is created when a display unit is in limited mode and the secondary engine display is selected to the same display unit. Repeated pushes of the secondary engine display switch will toggle the display on and off. When the display unit mode is limited, only the fuel and air synoptic switches remain operable. Display the fuel synoptic. In limited mode, the expanded fuel quantity indications display instead of the fuel synoptic. Now display the air synoptic. Likewise, the pressurization indications display instead of the air synoptic. Features of both indications are discussed in their respective lessons. The single source display's caution message appears when only one graphics generator remains functioning. Left inboard and outboard displays are echoed on the right display units. All right display unit controls are inoperative. The inboard display units can no longer be used as MFDs. 
The lower center display unit is the only MFD available. Cancel the message. Finally, in the event of an EFIS control panel or display select panel failure, backup control is available through the control display units. These backup operations are covered along with other CDU operations in a later lesson. This completes the instruction section of the lesson. Restore the left inboard display unit to its normal display. Now use the display select panel to restore the right inboard display unit. You need to check the VHF manager settings. Select the communications display and activate the manager menu. The lower center display unit is in limited mode due to an upper center display unit failure. Push only the operable display switches on the display select panel. You can select or remove the displays as many times as you wish. Touch the green arrow at any time to continue. Only the secondary engine display switch and the fuel and air synoptic switches are operable in limited mode. Touch the highlighted areas. Touch the highlighted areas.